All right, could you give me, I'm recording for the channel. Could you give me like 15, 20 minutes? I'm exhausted too because, all right, stop. I'm exhausted too because you haven't shut up the whole night. I heard you neighing outside of my goddamn room throughout the whole night. I couldn't get any sleep. So 15 minutes and I'll come feed you. Oh my God, go away, go away. Bye. Unbelievable. Skip it up and that up. So Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick actually just received a $200 million bonus due to a clause in his contract that was triggered. And this is due to the company's stock price skyrocketing over the past year. And that's been due to the pandemic. A lot of more people are home playing games. They aren't at work. They aren't socializing as much. Much Hopefully people are social distancing and not hitting the water bottle on the side of their desk. And that's caused people to play more games. And that's part of the reason why Activision stock is going through the roof. For example, um, March 23rd of 2020, their stock price was at $56.47 a share. And now their stock price actually isn't at its peak. It's now at $90.49 a share. Um, it actually peaked recently. It was at, at about $104 per a share in mid-February. So Activision is doing really well, and Bobby Kotick received $200 million bonus because of it. Now, if this story sounds somewhat familiar, in early 2019, I covered a story where even though Activision had a record-breaking 2018 in terms of revenue, they laid off 800 people in early 2019, and their reason for it was they saw weaker-than-anticipated retail demand. Record-breaking year, record-breaking profits the previous year, but they still laid off people because they want to streamline it so they could pocket more money and give their CEO a $200 million bonus. It's a cycle that repeats itself. It's not just in the gaming industry, but it doesn't matter which industry it is. It's disgusting across the board. Here I'm quoting from Kotaku.com. Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick routinely gets millions in stock bonuses every year based on how the company is doing. Now he's set to get even more for a total payout of nearly $200 million according to CTW Investment Group, a union pension fund advocacy organization. And it's all thanks to a clause in his contract that was recently triggered by the company's stock performance throughout the pandemic. While the increase in Activision's stock price is somewhat commendable, as we stated last year and continue to assert, this achievement alone does not justify such a substantial pay outcome for the CEO, CTW Investment Group researcher Michael Varner said in a statement. In a phone call with Kotaku, Varner called a maximum level payout the C-suite equivalent of running a six-minute mile and said Activision Blizzard is basically retroactively awarding Kotick gold medals for his past performance based on the latest stock price. While the pandemic has made Kotick even richer, it hasn't put an end to layoffs at Activision Blizzard. The company laid off roughly 800 people in early 2019, I just spoke about that, followed by hundreds more in the subsequent months, the closing of its French office, and just yesterday it confirmed that somewhere between 50 and 190 more people would be let go, including in its esports division, which has struggled over the last year during the ban on in-person gaming events. So here is a game company, a corporation that is their stock price basically in the past year has almost doubled. Um, they had record breaking profits, like I said, or record breaking revenue, uh, excuse me, in 2018 and laid off about 800 people in 2019. And they're laying off people <laughs> due to parts of the business underperforming. And yet their CEO gets a two hundred million dollar bonus oh we don't have the money to pay those people but we do have the money to pay our ceo another 200 million dollars even though we had to get lay people off because certain divisions underperformed so great your stock price is up but if i remember working for a furniture company and the regional manager didn't matter if if as a whole the stores did well. If one of those stores did bad, he was held accountable for it. And when he stepped down and became a store manager again, did they give him a payout? No, they didn't give him a payout. They just said, here, here's a job where you'll get less pay. You'll take it and you'll like it or we'll let you go. It's unbelievable the crony capitalism that goes on here, man. And look, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're working your ass off and you become the chief executive officer 
of a corporation, I'm not knocking you for that hustle, man. I'm not knocking you because you're in a great financial position. But when people are suffering, and in the gaming industry, they really suffer. They, they run game developers ragged, making them work 80, 90-hour weeks. Sometimes they don't, get, they don't get overtime pay. You have people literally getting sick because they're, they're working so many hours and getting so little sleep to crunch these games out. And then the best is the developers get the flack if the games don't come out and, and they're, they come out buggy kind of like Cyberpunk 2077, where the developer said the game should have another year to be developed. And they get the flack for it. The developers get the flack for it. Not It's it's not the guys in the three-piece suits who are making seven or eight figures a year that you never see. Maybe you'll the CEO you'll see. But they make these calls where they rush the games out. They, they work the developers to the bone. They don't give them proper protections, proper treatments. The games industry has a huge turnover rate when it comes to employment because people just can't handle it because they literally work themselves sick and they get nothing. The, the, these employees, they, they get their salary, but for what they do, they're underpaid and the CEOs and the higher ups reap the, reap the benefits. I mean, these people suffer, man. I'll give you an example right now of how these developers are worked to the bone. This is Emily Buck who worked at Telltale. Um, Emily Buck, who worked at Telltale, which laid off hundreds of employees in 2018, said that in her time in the games industry, she's needed to work more than 80 hour weeks to meet deadlines, sometimes for months on end, and feared losing her job, being demoted, or having her project canceled. With a union, it's not to say that those things wouldn't happen, but there would be channels to report and handle them. Instead, game devs like me often live in fear that if we speak up or try to improve our situation, we'll lose our jobs or, at the very least, our reputations. Gee, I wonder why Amazon doesn't want unions. Maybe because it would protect the workers and it would cost Amazon more money to give the workers these protections. Why do you think all these industries don't want unions? They Now, look, I'm not saying unions are perfect. They have their issues. I know people that were personally in unions, and it, it kind of lets bad apples sit there and rot and not be taken from the bunch, okay, where you have a person who's not putting their weight in, not putting their work in, and the union protects them, and, and they basically just get to sit there like a bump on a log and receive all the benefits of being in a union. And I'm not saying unions in other ways are not flawed either, but this is slave labor, man. You have, okay, people are getting salaries, but, it, oh, look, you're going to work over, you're going to work 18 hours a day. We're only paying you to work eight hours a day, and you're barely going to get any any sleep because we got we want to get this game out by the holiday season, and we don't want to miss it because we want to make sure we make our quarter. But yeah, we're, you're, 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 uh, the reward you'll get is that you won't be laid off. You won't be fired. You won't be blacklisted from the industry. And if even with that, even if you work yourself to the bone and are exhausted and physically ill where you have to receive medical treatment from being overworked, uh, if we need to lay you off, we're going to lay you off anyway. And we're not, probably not going to give you a severance package. But the CEO of the same company that you work for, where you're basically slaving to get a game out and you're not receiving any bonuses to work your ass off, he's going to get $200 million bonus because our stock price hit a certain number. And yeah, we, we got we, we got to pay him. And then I always bring up Bernie Stoller from Sega. I understand that these guys, when they sign on to be a CEO, it's in their contract, but he got fired from Sega because he, the Sega of Japan wanted the Dreamcast when it was sold because Bernie Stoller was president of Sega of America. They wanted it to be sold at 250 bucks. Bernie Stoller said, nope, we're undercutting that. We're selling it at 199. I'm flat out not listening to the parent, parent branch of the company, which was Sega of Japan. They fired Bernie Stoller for doing that. And you know what Bernie Stoller got for disobeying the parent branch of the company he worked for, which was Sega of Japan? He worked for he was the president of Sega of America. He got a five million dollar severance package. You're fired. You didn't <laughs> you were insubordinate. You didn't do what we wanted you to. Imagine you at your job, they would just cut you off and say, we'll send your check in the mail or you'll get your last direct deposit, get off the property because you didn't do what we're supposed to and you're no longer allowed to come into the office or into the store or whatever or pack up your crap and go. Bernie Stoller got, and that's in 1999 money, by the way. He got a $5 million severance package for disobeying the parent branch of his company. 
This is the world that we live in. Look, you could be against, I'm all for capitalism. I like making money too as much as the next guy and I don't want to knock anybody's hustle. But I am against crony capitalism where you have, you're you in that club and everyone's handing out money like it it's, grows on trees and other people that work their asses off are just cogs in the wheel. They're just lemmings and they're not appreciated. And what's amazing is, is that the reason that these CEOs and these higher ups make what they make is because of the hard work that these employees, these developers put in for them. And look, I understand that a CEO does a lot of work and, and that they're the brain behind innovating for the company and, and, and possibly bringing them in a new direction and keeping them profitable. But if the employees aren't putting the work in, if the developers aren't developing the, the games that Activision Blizzard puts out, what would Bobby Kotick make? But instead of rewarding them, you know what they're rewarded with? Fear. Oh, you don't want to work your 80 or 90 hour a week? Well, we'll just blacklist you. You'll never be able to work again and we'll fire you. So we'll fire you, treat you like crap. And if you think you're going to go somewhere else and get a job and work for another developer, we'll just tell them you wouldn't put the work in. We'll tell, we'll blacklist you. And that's what they're, these people are literally enslaved. And for every idiot out there that's going to say, oh, they could just get a new job, Rich. Really? It's real easy out there right now to get a new job, right? Especially if you have a, yeah, I love when people say that to you. You can tell that people are out of touch or, or, or just aren't smart enough to understand. It's not that easy just to get a job. It's not that easy just to walk away from a job if you have a family and you have kids and you, you have other obligations. So these jobs that are literally the lifeline of their families, they're not just going to walk away. And these son of a bitches at the top know that. So they have them on strings, and while they have them on strings making these people dance, they're collecting all the checks and putting the money in their pockets and essentially robbing these developers, working their asses off blind. Something's got to give, man, and something's got to change. This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. Hey, if you enjoy my content, consider becoming a Review Tech USA member. I'll have a link below in the description. I live stream now on this channel all the time, and it gives you access to cool emoticons to use as well while I live stream. Again, link below in the description. Thank you for your continued support.